السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم، بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. لا تصار لي دروس شريف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم. وعلى إبراهيم إنك عميل مجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى يسألونك عن الأهل التي كل هي أموى كتب للناس والحج قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أهلدي علنا بين أمني والإيمان والسلامة والإسلام ربي وربك الله خلالا رشدي وخير my dear brothers and sisters, as you all know, we're in the month of Muharram. The last time I, I gave my little talk, it was about Ashura. So as we're in the month of Muharram, you know, this month is sacred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Rasul, Allah salatu salam says this month is sacred. So we must all take these words seriously. So when it's sacred, make use of the sacredness and the sanctity of it. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when they ask you, O oh Muhammad, this is the ayah I just recited, and the translation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, and remember carefully, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Rasul, he's also addressing the Sahabas, and I'm going to speak much about that today. They ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the new moon, say they are measurement of time for the people and for the Hajj, which we know about, which we just passed. But the, 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 the new moon, that's how we check our time with Muslims. And it's more important, the moon is so important to us, and it's for, important for all nations. Scientists are true that many things, they come, they, they come, they use the moon. They have the Gregorian calendar, we have the Hindu calendar, uh, after the migration, but we have the Gregorian calendar also. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and then the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, O oh Allah, let us see this new moon appear on us with security and faith. The new moon with security and faith and a career of good guidance. Uh, so, some of the important facts that we must know about Muharram. Muharram and the Islamic New Year. The awareness and the concern of the Hadri calendar, not the Gregorian calendar, but the Hadri calendar, right? We use it in America, yes, but we must focus on the Gregorian, uh, the, the, the Hebrew calendar, the migration, after the immigration. It is not a, just a calendar, rather it's a part of our identity as a Muslim. It is a part of our history. It is deeply rooted in our deen. In fact, our life as Muslim revolves around, around the Hebrew calendar. It commemorates the most significant incident in human history. Firstly, it is linked to our Prophet and believing in him as the final messenger to mankind and to humanity. This is one of our pillars of Islam and our faith as Muslim. This takes us to a most significant incident and great history, the immigration, the migration of the Holy Prophet from Makkah to Medina. And that is an amazing journey, as numerous lessons that scholars until now discover. We should all discuss these things with our children when we are around in bedtime. These stories we should tell them. We have many, many things the children know today, but they don't know these things, and I'm going to mention them. This journey, and we all know it, when the Rasul <laughs> was casted out by his people from Mecca, and he was going to Medina, and he left on the camel. He sits on the camel and he's moving, he's going. He was casted out by his people. And he turned back. This is very emotional. He turned back and he looked at Mecca. He said, oh, Mecca, it was not for your people who has casted me out, I wouldn't have left you. That's where he was born and grew. He said, oh, Mecca, it was not for your people, I would not have left you. So it is very emotional. And when he went to Medina, look the welcome we had. We had the dog, we had the people and the children and the women and the, the Sahabas and the men were waiting for him with open arms. Look at the difference. And we know the story of uh, 
tired and all these things what happened to him. You know, I, I was going through this thing that I'm a little, little tough. And I remember I said, you know, when your father gives you something or someone gives you something, you, you don't care, you know, I give you the cell phone, you don't care about it, right? You destroy it, you, 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 you abuse it. But if you have to work and buy the cell phone, then you carry it. These, the, the, the Rasul and the Sahabas them had worked tirelessly. And we should tell our children about these things. What is being this religion that we are destroying? This religion that we are destroying. And I don't want to go there, but we all know what I'm talking about. Right? Now, so, so when he left Mecca, he told the people, he, he, told, he, he turned back and he said, Oh Mecca, he was sitting on the camel and he said, Oh Mecca, if it wasn't for your people, I would not have left you. Right? So, in this month of Muharram, this is one of the, the, the story. It was a turning point in the history of mankind and a turning point for all nations. All nations, right, is part somehow of this thing. And also for us as Muslims. We must treat this month very sacred and sanctified. It's still sacred. We have this month still going. We have things we can do, Sadaka, be with our family, give, uh, do, do good things in this month. It's past. So many things. Because Allah says it's a sacred month. Zulkada, Zulicha, Muharram, and Raja. These four months, pay careful attention, talk about it in your home so often. Do something in these days that are, we have today the 14th of Muharram. Let's do something. Do one thing, fast one day, and fast properly, you know, because maybe that one fast, when you go to your grave and you go to Allah, then maybe that one fast might keep you. Or that one dollar in the circle. Or do something for your family. You know, these things are important. The family is important also for the upbringing, you know, of the Ummah. So, it is very sacred. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this sacredness, we must take it seriously. And the Rasul alayhi salatu salam. In the beginning of every, of every new year, as Muslims, we have to start calculating our zakat for the whole year. That's how we do our zakat. So when comes Ramadan, Ramadan will Ramadan. When you have Ramadan, then you give the zakat, which is, you know, you want the maximum blessing. This is, this is one of the reasons of Muharram. So we know our time when we start to prepare our zakat and look at the money in our bank account and whatever. So, in, 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 in the name of the Rasul, alayhi salatu salam, was attached to Allah's name regarding Muharram, which is called Shahrullah, the month of Allah, Al-Muharram, Al-Muharram. So we testify, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So our deen is built upon this. When the Rasul alayhi salatu salam went to Medina, after Mecca he went to Medina, right? The, the Sahabas was with him. They were in Ruku and Sujood. There were signs of mark on their forehead. On the day of judgment, Rasulullah sallallahu will recognize us, the people who we didn't see, by the wudu, the nur on our face and the wudu that we make every day for salah. Right? The Sahabas would be recognized by the, the forehead. And, um, and the Rasul Sallallahu lived for 63 years. 23 years of Nabuwat and his effort in this religion. 23 years of Nabuwat. Uh, so, 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 but he had dedicated, he had dedicated, he had dedicated Sahabas. Dedicated Sahabas with him. And when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala addressed the Rasul in this, in the Quran, he is really addressing the Sahabas because they were dedicated. And we need more like that. Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, Usman, I mention this all the time. We need more people. Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqas, Khalid ibn Muhammad Walid. When the Rasul alayhi salatu salam is on the battlefield on the front line, on this side is Sa'ad, on this side is Khalid. And who are they? Uh, that's a not a long, long story to describe the talk about the biography of these Sahabas. Anything like 30, 40 people attacked, they, they just kill them up. One was so Saifullah, one, the hands of Khalid ibn Walid, if I'm not mistaken, is was so huge that when he grabbed you, you know, and these are the kind of people we have to, we have, to have today. Our deen is in trouble. It's left, right, and center. Go on the social media. They're attacking us left, right, and center. I'm not telling you to go fight, but we have to protect ourselves and our generation to come. We are leaving. What are we leaving? We have school sometimes, the break is going up, the school will be opening back. But the time when we have, bring our children, some of them, bring them. Do something before you pass to maybe the children, you know? So, so they, they, but the Sahabas they were dedicated, right? I mean, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala addressed the Sahabas. Uh, Rasul, he said, addressed the Sahabas uh, in the Quran. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, 
Sunnah Quran ini. Allah Tina Ma'aw Ashshadau Allah Kufri Baruhumahi Barbainam. The ones who are with him, their qualities are such that they are stern and tough with the Kufars. Because of the effort of the Rasul, right? The Sahabas used to be in Ruku and Sujud. Tarakum Tarahum Rukua 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 was Sujud. Bismillahum Baku Ujubu Bismillahum. The signs of Rukhu and Sujood were seen in their party. Right? Today you come to the masjid, your child see you're making Rukhu and Sujood in the home, in the masjid, Quran. That's what we want today. We have to try and make an effort. Our, our deen is at stake. Our deen is at stake at this time. So, the status of the companion was such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasted and addressed them in the Holy Quran and in the Torah of Musa salam to the previous nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zalika masalil fi Torah, wa masalil fi linjil, ka zara'in akhraja shabra. This example in the Torah and in the Injil to Musa salam and Isa salam. The Sahabas developed from, for, from a few like a small tree. There was a small set of groups in the early days of Islam. And then it grows bigger and bigger. Abu Bakr, Aisha radiallahu anhu, and Ali, and it goes on and on and on. And there was a huge army, right? And then, so that was about the Prophet of Islam. And I'm going to touch on another thing in Muharram, and I will close with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also in, in, in this month, the ransom of the Prophet after he fled Medina to Mecca, he was martyred. The, the grandson of Rasulullah as Hussein Rajalahu was martyred. In the battle with Yazid ibn Muawiyah and his army in, in Kufa, the people of Iraq, the people of Iraq and the city called Kufa, we know, sent for, for Hussein because Yazid was not ruling the country properly, so they sent for Hussein Rajalahu. But he sent his cousin Muslim bin Aqil, Muslim bin Aqil Rajalahu to make sure everything was okay because they keep sending letters and letters and we know what happened to Ali bin uh, Talib and what happened to Hassan, they did the same to them. So, so he sent Muslim bin Aqil to check and see if everything is okay, right? The people of Kufa were, were ready for his allegiance, his buyer, and because they did not like how Yazid was ruling Kufa. In the meantime, Hussein closest companion reminded him how they treated his father, Ali Radlanbo, and they betrayed him and also betrayed Hassan Radu. While Hussein was making all arrangements to travel, Yazid was in Damascus, even uh, Muawiyah, heard the people of Kufa want to revolt. He heard of an insurrection. He heard of an insurrection. So he sent Ubaidullah bin Yazid as the new governor with 12 men. So when Ubaidullah went to Kufa, he covered his face, so the people of Kufa says, Marhaba, Marhaba. So the people of Kufa, thought it was Hussein bin Rasulullah, not knowing it was Yazid, uh, the, the government. So the people asked, are you Hussein Rajalam? And he said yes. He then ordered all the people who were in charge of the insurrection to be tortured and beheaded. He also got hold of Muslim bin Aqil and tortured him and executed him. And the people of Kufa suddenly find themselves by a dozen, uh, paralyzed by a dozen of men of Ubaidullah bin Yazid. The people who spread, uh, fled by Ato, uh, Hussein, they all automatically turned it up here. He, he gone with the opposite person. In the meantime, Hussein realized on his way to Kufa. Because the people gave him the reward, finally he arrived at a place called Karbala. And, and a detachment of soldiers came and said, You cannot proceed further. Saitana Hussein Radulanbo realized the game is over. So he put three choices to them. Number one, let me return. Number two, return to where I come from. Number two, let me go meet Yazid in Damascus, or let me go to the border and do jihad forever. On the order of Ubaidullah, the battle started. Hussein Radiallahu was losing his sons after sons, fighting alone, ne nephew after nephew were slaughtered, slaughtered. And the people who was on his side finally went to the opposite side, opposing him. Hussein Radiallahu, people were very few, that's what they came. And he was fighting like a lion. Finally, his head was severed from his body. And he closed it, one of the saddest days in Islamic history. This we should tell our children, daytime, nighttime, and every time. They must know Islamic history. This is how we get our deen to the common prayer. We don't know the fight and the struggle that they did. You know? And he closed it, 
This was the son of Ali and Fatima, the grandson of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had it. The one was called as Shababu Ahl Jannah. And the, pe the people betrayed Hussein Radhiallahu. One year later, they realized they caused the death of Hussein Radhiallahu. And I'm going to continue on this. They went. Maybe the next week they went and they started to you know you know what the Shia does. They beat themselves and all of that. And that's where the story continues. But I'm going to stop here. Bajazakallah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.